question is how long does it take for you to relax and align yourself with that which in which everything is arising the source of being the source of existence um so I know I went on a tangent there, Andrew, but I'm no, hoping that it's, it's useful. Beautiful. And actually, it's not, for me, it's not really a tangent. I think it's actually closer to what I was kind of get, trying to get at. Yeah. I just sort of have this thing of like, well, okay, well, you have a, uh, you know, what, how a true practitioner would behave in the, in the, in the charnel ground. But right. What if, you know, a Zen monk or a Advaita Vedantist, like what, how would how would they treat that situation because it's, it's the same thing you know, they, you know it's the same the, thing and you can't really ask it quite like that because an individual zen monk or an individual this or that practitioner would be different from each other just what's the party line depending on yeah in other words it's not about the party line it's about understanding right there's no refuge in party lines party lines are scaffolding when they're really healthy schools, then if you take on the scaffolding, you will get to the meat of it yourself at some point, sometimes through stumbling around, but you will eventually get to the point where your own intuition, your own sense of the reality of things awakens in the midst of the scaffolding. Then the scaffolding, you can still go through the motions or not. And there's so many Zen stories like that. Now, this guy goes off and doesn't bother with it, and the other guy does, but it doesn't matter either way because the scaffolding has done its job, which is basically just kind of to it's kind of like blinders on a horse. It's just trying to get you to pay attention to what you need to pay attention to. But once you see what you oh, this is what then it doesn't matter if I have blinders on or not. Oh, there's the track, I can run it, no problem. I get it. But it has to be a placing it in the ground yourself. At some point you recognize that you're the one who is framing this. And you know, ultimately, of course, nothing is done by the individual person. So we get we can get into that whole thing about what does that mean? But again, it has to do with communication as we're speaking. How do we communicate anything? Like in order for me to talk with you about this, I have to assume the point of view that you're speaking. So I live, you know, what's good is you didn't try to listen. Oh, what's the point of view from which he's speaking? What are his assumptions? Okay, so I'll answer from those assumptions. That's all that can be done. It's not, and of course, at some level, I'm affirming your assumptions by answering you that way. But to the degree to which I speak a little bit differently than them, then I'm challenging them. But there, none of the assumptions are correct, really. I mean, because they're all points of view or already. And, and when they're fine, as long as you realize they're not actually fixed. You know, so it, it's so the the tricky part comes in when, you know, it's like, well, this is why Ramana, he loved to say, who is it that is asking this question? Like, who is it? that has to align with what? Who is aligning? Who? Right? So then you challenge the assumed place where the thing is placed unconsciously, because that's what we're talking about. When we talk about there's, a, there's something I have to align with, there's an assumption there's a fixed point out there that's safe that I, which is also a fixed point that actually exists, have to align with. But that's not the way it is at all. A Ramana's thing is he doesn't even deal with what you're talking about. He said, well, who is it that wants to align with anything? Yeah. He challenges that fixed point because that's the primary fixed point. See, the crazy making thing is like, oh, well, what should I align with? Should I align with this teaching? or that one, or should I develop this aspect of myself or that aspect? What do I have to be? How do I be the most fulfilled? But 
what is it that's asking that? <laughs> what is that? You know, when that is challenged, looked through, seen through, then one is the space. And when one is the space, everything is seen naturally to have to align in that space because that's what is. So Ramana didn't even bother ever trying to align himself with anything. He just questioned what is it that's wanting to align with anything and became the space itself without any like effort at all other than doubting any fixed point. And then there was nothing. And then everything in his life aligned in that space. Everything just happened in that space. And he was never concerned with things aligning. He was just concerned with that space, or he was that space, and everything aligned within him. That's the ultimate. That's someone who is just, you know. Yes. So, you know, but then my tendency is to say, oh, that's so beautiful. I need yeah, to is. align myself with Ramana and. Yeah, yeah, you can't. You are wrong. You see, there it is. Ramana <laughs> didn't do that. <laughs> He didn't say, oh, Shankar is so beautiful. I have to align myself with Shankar. He didn't do that. <laughs> it's like, or Buddha or somebody. He never did that. He didn't. He, yeah. He asked, who is it that thinks he has to align himself with Rama? It's again, two fixed, two positions. It could be more than one, two. You know, and everything then aligns itself because there's different aspects that arise in you that we usually call us, my body my thoughts, my feelings, everything. You see, and that's, this is why I talked in terms of like the, um, uh, there's a kind of natural hierarchy within the goddess herself. You know, expansion, the most expanded state. Everything else is within that. Um, because there's all kinds of things you can call you in that and everything else will align within that if the, larger space is your your thing does that make sense oh yeah and i guess my my final question maybe is then is in the way we're speaking now is devotion alignment why not sure, sure. absolutely yeah. absolutely that's the pinnacle. That's where Ramana was really like, you know, he used to say, and many people have said things like this, that at the mountain peak, you know, Bhakti and uh, Yana are the same. So again, when it comes to this level of speaking, it's the same. It's like devotion. Because now we're talking about, you could say, you could speak about it higher devotion and then higher devotion and wisdom no difference higher devotion and meditation no difference you could say this is true meditation meditation on emptiness you say this is true devotion surrender to emptiness you could say this is true knowledge true wisdom being emptiness mind or no mind I mean, it's, it doesn't matter that at that point. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I mean, to speak the language of embodiment, like I'm a person and I'm doing this and that, then, then yes, it's absolutely devotion. Because basically what you're saying is this life I want to live that where it feels the most authentic and where it feels the most authentic is where I'm tuning in to the largest sense of expansion. But then, you know, so that's, but that's another reference point. That's for somebody who wants to say I'm a body and a mind and all of that. And um, so much of that teaching is about the affirmation of being a human individual rather than being some kind of abstraction. And yet, if that abstract if that higher self, if that vast expansion is not in the equation 
of a person who's wanting to be embodied, it leads to all kinds of identification with, with states and emotions and feelings without a sense of direction and without a sense of completion. So we always need to have, okay, um, as an embodied being, you need God. And I say God with a G dash D, not talking about a, you know, a particular God. <laughs> I mean, you know, the divine ultimate. Um, in order, you need a horizon to walk toward as an embodied being. Does that make sense, Andrew? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, you listen to Papaji and it's like, it's all the ultimate. It doesn't care about embodiment in that sense. But if you look at the life of such of that person, embodied, householder, functional, all that stuff, you know, because it just aligned naturally. The thing is you do what it, you, you follow where, as I, again, as I said to Kent earlier, you follow where the Holy Spirit leads you. All of the, all of the, um, all of the things that we are drawn to do, the thing is, is it's important to be, to I think it's important to hear the good news that the full expansion is where your peace is in. You know, in other words, it's, uh, it's like I'm at home in the universe and what I'm really after is full expansion. And all of these things that I'm drawn to are actually the um, packages of that. You know, open them up and uh, further expansion, further at homeness, further sense of authenticity, which is because I am vibrate, vibrating with the largest space of the goddess. That's what I'm after. I'm the, you know, if that makes sense. Is that, I don't, does that make sense? Yes. Yeah? Totally. I'm looking at Kent too. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, thanks, Andrew. Thank you very much. Yeah. I just want to echo thanks for that question and the uh, treatise is really helpful. Um, and the language is helpful too. Excellent.